My private sector friends always say, what about action and follow-up? Our sessions will address how to achieve long-term sustainable export for growth. Focused on the triple bottom line of planet, people, and prosperity. This must be inclusive, sustainable development, which works for all people, now and for the future. We must utilize our partnerships. Development needs mutual beneficial partnership across regions, between private and public sector, within supply chains, and with strong trade institutions and financing to support enterprises. Before we launch into our keynote speech, the state of world trade from Professor Gamawat, I just want to say a few words about the days ahead. We have representatives here from Fortune 500 companies, representatives from SMEs, from governments, trade support institutions from over 60 countries. We want dialogue and engagement because it is only with your input that we can have a valuable output. We want energy and passion and hope to leave with more than you actually came with. These are not easy tasks, but they're ongoing commitments and I think they will prove fruitful. Well, what do we mean by export impact for good? The export part is really simple, and ITC has been doing that for the last 40 years. And what we are here to talk about in the next two days. We passionately believe in the power of export-led development and also in the role of exports in sustainable ex in, in, uh, development. Impact means that we need to be sure that our actions cause positive export outcomes for the future. It is for the good part that the crooks of what we do for the better and for the long term. With all of us in this room, we can build strategies that will work towards long and short term gains, making the now work for the future working together to achieve export impact for good. This is the challenge for the next two days. Now I want to introduce Professor Gamowat for our keynote speech. And indeed, uh, what we have here is an example of someone who is perhaps what might be called an overachiever. Professor Gamowat was the youngest ever professor at Harvard University where he served for 25 years. And as he said, uh, when, he, when he started, um, the students were, were, were actually older than he was. And of course, I'm sure he found that a great challenge. But I don't think challenge has been anything that Professor Gamowat has ever shifted away from. And he did uh, his, his 25 years after working for McKinsey. I think he has also been, um, been, been uh, selected as, the, as one of the 100 most, most influential thinkers by, uh, by The Economist. So I, th I, I think we are setting him, him up here uh, to actually stimulate some thinking and he has, if you haven't written, read, read any of his books, I think, uh, I don't think he has, has them here for sale, but there is always Amazon.com to, uh, to look him up and make sure that you, you get some of the cutting edge thinking that he has been known for in this world. So as we are out of time and running a little late, I'm not going to say anything more, other than we have both Dr. Superchai and Pascal Lamy who are actually going to commentate on his, on his uh, presentation. And then I think uh, we will open this to debate and I will manage the, the debate. And uh, then we come to a conclusion and then it's time to move on to the next session. So Professor Gamowat, please.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very great pleasure to be here with you today uh, from the standpoint of not just sharing some thoughts with you, but hopefully over the next two days, since I'm mostly a private sector person, learning a little bit more about how people at UNCTAD, at the World Trade Organization, in your community, look at some of the issues that I've been working on as well. And uh, with that, let me get started. I think that, uh, let me start with a one slide summary of the world economy uh, from about a year ago. Clearly not the kind of picture that is very, very uplifting. And so you may wonder, is his whole talk going to be like this? I just set this up as counterpoint because when I, what I want to get onto is I think three elements of figuring out the way forward, talking about why each of them is important, and then coming back and trying to wrap up around what this means for, uh, hopefully, for some of the objectives that all of you are trying to pursue. So the three things that I'm going to talk about are understanding how global we really are, because I think there are a lot of misconceptions about this. Second, understanding all the barriers that constrain trade, because again, I think, and this is not a universal tendency, but I think there's sometimes a tendency to think about these things too narrowly. And then finally, and probably most importantly, really trying to think broadly about the gains from trade, which is something that I've done a little bit of work on recently. So let me start off with something that will help me get the pulse of this audience on how global are we? What I've put up on this slide are three very different perspectives on the world economy. Uh, the first from the head of a major consulting firm. The second from the former CEO. There's been a lot of turnover of CEOs recently, so I've been unable to update this, uh, describing his perspective. And the third from a journalist who's become very well known. And I'm very curious uh, what the sentiment is in the room about which of these three perspectives comes closest to describing your perspective on globalization. So I'm going to, with your indulgence, and I you know, think of this as calisthenics if you don't like voting early in the morning, I just want a show of hands, and perhaps because I'm too used to dealing with students, uh, to be very clear, please vote for just one of these alternatives, and please don't hold out for a fourth or fifth alternative. These are the only three we have on the table for the purposes of this little guessing game. How many people would go with version A? Okay, version B? Version C? Okay, uh, so increasing intensity of preference, uh, C is better than B, B is better than A. The first thing I'd like to suggest is that if you really did believe that there are no barriers left in the world, that the world is perfectly flat, that borders and space don't matter, then I'm sad to say there would be really no function for organizations like the ITC or the WTO. Now the good news is that that's not exactly how the world works. And so let me just, I'm sorry I'm being so professorial this morning, but let's see how well you've been reading the world investment reports that get put out by UNCTAD. Let's play a little guessing game. Think of all the foreign direct investment that happens in the world. Divide it by gross fixed capital formation as a rough measure of all the investment going on within or across borders. What percentage do you get? And it might be useful to re reflect on this and pick a number in your own mind before I move on and show what the answer is and try and remember that number because otherwise this isn't much fun. Everybody formed their own estimate of foreign direct investment levels divided by gross fixed capital formation. Okay, well, time's pressing on. So 9% last year, according to the latest World Investment